Welcome back. We got dynamite and transfer papers from the armory. But before we deal with that, I want to go get the locket by telling the soldier that we delivered his letter. Nothing to report in the West. What can you tell? What can you tell about that locket? You've delivered my letter. I guess I'll keep my promise. Have my locket. This locket opens to reveal the picture of a young woman and an inscription. From HB to FK, a love that cannot be killed. If the two soldiers in the armory were crew of the Tripoli, I wonder if all of the people here are crew members of the various ships that uh, Trelane has captured. So far, nobody from the Enterprise, or at least not that Kirk, Spock, or McCoy managed to recognize. That does make me wonder whether or not the guy in the apartment is actually missing an arm. Maybe he had a prosthetic that is just not present in the... in the simulation here. Um, I wonder... We have dynamite. We have uh, at least some of the power objects. Let's see if we can... And blow everything up. We cannot just combine the dynamite with the objects in our inventory. No effect. Fascinating. The object briefly disintegrated but was reconstituted by other power sources around the village of Gothos. Speculation, Mr. Spock. It will be necessary to destroy all of Trelane's power sources in Gothos at the same time if we hope to dampen his power. Okay, I guess we did try to blow it up in our inventory. It's very, uh, unspectacular. But to destroy all of them together, we need to put them in the plane. You put the clock in the triplane. You put the locket in the triplane. No, we don't have the uh, chalkboard yet, but I'm sure that's not important. And then we try to blow up the triplane. Affirmative, Captain. Everyone stay well back. I would stay further back than that, but... We did not destroy enough of Trelane's power objects, Captain. He was able to use their energy to shield the triplane from the force of the explosion. We need to destroy all the power objects in Gothos at the same time. That image of the plane blowing up and then putting itself back together is, for some reason, the strongest image in my memory of playing this game when I was a kid. Which is why I wanted to make sure I showed it to you. Because, of course, I knew that we needed the chalkboard before that would be effective. We still need to find a way to get that, though. In any case... Oh, we can see the beer is gone now. We can give the transfer papers we got to Sundergaard. He'll be happy about that, and maybe he'll be able to help us in some way. I told you I wasn't bluffing. We three kings would take the stake. If I didn't know your good luck was only temporary, I'd be quite annoyed. I have so few vices in my life. I must do the best I can with what I have. Whose deal is it? Looks like the game is progressing as usual. Don't these people ever do anything else other than play poker? Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel. I cannot express my gratitude. If there is anything I can do for you, please let me know. Well, he works for the press, so maybe there is. Welcome, friends. Can I help you? What can you tell? What can you tell? I need you to spread a rumor about a chalkboard. What can you? T I need you to spread a rumor about a chalkboard. That might work. You say you need me to convince Herr Schiller to give you the kindergarten blackboard. I would do anything for the man who got the commander to issue a transfer for my son. 
And um, he works really fast, because I think the superintendent will already have heard of it. Herr Kirk, though my position as school superintendent keeps me busy, I'm always glad to help you. You look worried. It wouldn't happen to be about the chalkboard by any chance. I have heard the most horrifying rumors about these boards. Do you think they are true? Absolutely. If you wish, I could dispose of the thing for you before anyone is harmed. I'd need a letter for Frau Hopperdink. Absolutely. Let me just take pen to paper. Take it when you want to destroy the vile thing. All right. Hopefully that will convince the teacher to give us the chalkboard. You pick up the piece of paper. This letter from the superintendent gives you the authority to confiscate the chalkboard. Alright, let's go give that to the teacher. To Frau Humperdink. Well, if the superintendent says you must take it, you must. <laughs> I think even Kirk doesn't know where he just put that. Alright, I think we have all of them now. I think the reason that I remember blowing up the plane is because I had a lot of trouble figuring out how to get all the power objects and I just kept trying it whenever I got a new one, so I probably did that quite often. In my defense, I was not very old. You put the like chalkboard teens. in the triplane. Alright, let's see if blowing it up will take this time. Affirmative, Captain. Fortunately, we have enough dynamite. Everyone stay well back. I suppose I should be angry at you, Captain, with your act of vandalism against my beautiful aircraft. But then, barbarians will be barbarians. There's only one barbarian in the room, Trelane, and I'm looking at him right now. Release my ship, Trelane. And don't you ever grow up, Trelane? You may have powers of a god, but that doesn't even come close to making you a man. There's only release my ship, Trelane. Let's try the direct route. My ship. My ship. It's always your ship, your crew. Don't you have anything else to think about? Conquests of your enemies and the, the fair sex. Restore the ships you've stolen and return them unharmed. You're in no position to make demands. I am the Baron of Gothus, the most renowned aristocrat in this part of Germany. This farcical, wildly inaccurate fantasy of yours. And you are my prisoner, a mere Lieutenant Colonel, Jimmy Kirk and I will do with you whatever I want. All right, well, I guess he still has some of his power. But we did get his attention and got into the castle, so hopefully we can do something with that. The magnificent floor of Castle Trelane. It's not that impressive, to be honest. A poor bear rug. Trelane. The Baron of Gothos smirks triumphantly as the little drama unfolds. An ornate table. An axe and shield. As with most of Trelane's collection, they are mostly ornamental. An ugly gargoyle-like decoration. A trifle grotesque for the setting, isn't it, Trelane? Why, Kirk, I wasn't aware of your interest in the design of castles. I hope you like my rug better. Okay. It's no time to be discussing interior design. An ugly gargoyle-like decoration. A trifle grotesque for this. Why? 
If the real thing weren't bad enough, a portrait of the humble Baron of Gothos smirks nauseatingly at you. These candles illuminate Trelane's self-portrait, a charming brick fireplace. This bottle contains a very realistic reduction of the SS Shinobi, a freighter. Why do I get the feeling that it is not a model? This bottle contains a very realistic reduction of the SS Manikier, a Denebian transport. This bottle contains a very realistic reduction of the USS Zimbabwe. My ship! Bring it back or I'll... This one's even more savage than the last one of your officers who made the same mistake. My compliments, Captain, on having such a spirited crew. Truly a testament to your fine leadership. Release him, Trelane. He isn't even a member of my crew. He's done you no harm. Take me in his place. He's not a member of my crew and you know it. Besides, he looks rather peaceful standing there. I'm kind of tempted to say this. Release him, Trelane. He's done you no harm. Take me in his place. But I guess we should beat a bigger man. Ah, oh, the gallant captain. Intervening on behalf of one who despises him. Don't worry about him, Captain. Worry about yourself. I suppose I should thank you, Captain. Later, Commander. I suppose you should. Well, I have a guess about what the fourth one's gonna be. This bottle contains a very realistic reduction of the USS Enterprise. Jim, is that what I think it is? It is the Enterprise, Doctor. It is functioning normally, aside from being trapped. The crew are alive and well. My latest hobby, gentlemen, putting warships in bottles, celebrating the Grand Marshal heritage of your species. Yeah, sure. Wonder if we can reach them, actually. Captain, thank goodness you're all right. We've been stuck in a place on minimal life support, and every time we fix our communication systems, it goes offline again. Shall we try to beam you back? That might be problematic, Mr. Scott. Be careful, Captain. We've scanned two life forms that are right off the power scale. Two life forms, Scotty. Scotty, come in. How like an engineer your Mr. Scott is. Always fixated on the unimportant. Two life forms. Interesting. Wonder what he's talking about. All right, Trelane, why don't we end this farce? I'm the one who humiliated you. I'm the reason your parents punished you. Let the others and their ships go free. Last time, Captain, you cheated. But if your friends are here, maybe you won't cheat. Well, so much for that idea. Well, how does the great James T. Kirk get us out of this mess? Or the ones who will get out of this mess alive? None of us will get out of here alive if we don't stick together. Do you have any ideas, Mr. Ellis? Have you ever played hide-and-seek, Captain? From what you've told me, he's a cosmic child hiding from his parents. If I were his parents, I wouldn't leave him alone for a minute. I'll bet my life that someone's looking for him, Captain. You just might be right, Mr. Ellis. That's the first useful thing he said. Well, this is another fine mess we're in, Jim. Any ideas on how to get out of this, Bones? Well, looking at it from a medical perspective, we might view Trelane as a biological control network. And everything else that's going on is controlled by Trelane. And? What happens if Trelane loses control? Immaturity does seem to be Trelane's only weakness. That's dangerous, but Like playing with a phaser on overload, but that's the only thing I can think of right now. I'll keep that in mind, but it's not my first choice. I can suggest no logical course of action that can resolve this dilemma. This is hardly a logical situation, Mr. Spock. Indeed. Still, I wonder if Trelane realizes the extent of his misrepresentation. Hmm, that might be interesting to point out how inaccurate all of this is. My tricorder does not register him, Captain. It is as though he were not there. Captain, the painting is another power object. 
I think at this point we're past having to destroy those, though. The tricorder detects nothing unusual. No unusual readings. The rug isn't a power object? How surprising. Very disappointing. The tricorder confirms that the ship has been shrunk. I know of no scientific way this could have occurred, and no way to reverse it. We'll have to convince our host to do it, Mr. Spock. Or you could get uh, Wayne Slinsky involved. The tricorder confirms that the ship ha will have to convince. Okay, I guess they all give the same response. Nothing. It's as if he weren't there. If you attempt to steal from my collection, let's see. Oh, I believe the removal of hands was one of your more time-honored punishments. You know all about punishments, don't you, Trelay? I would guard your tongue, Captain. I believe the removal of an offensive tongue was an even older tradition than removing hands. I was just trying to scan him, not steal him. Anyway, let's talk to Trelane and see if we can uh, work something out. Well, Captain, I suppose you're about to make your grand plan of escape. You must think you're pretty clever, Trelane, with your replica of the First World War. Why should I have to make a grand plan to escape from a loser like you? I guess that's the make him lose control plan for uh, McCoy. I don't have to do anything. Eventually, your parents are going to find you and discipline you again. That's going more Trellis's idea. You must think you're pretty clever, Trelane, with your replica of the First World War. And this seems to have been Spock's idea. Let's go with that. Why, thank you, Captain. I wasn't complimenting you, Trelane. I've never seen such a piece of nonsense in my life. Although you could have made that trench scene much more realistic. If World War I had been the way you depicted, human history would have been a lot less bloody. I wasn't... Although you could have made that trench scene much more realistic. Now he seems to really romanticize violence, so maybe focusing on the trench scene would do the trick. Really, Captain? Look into the memory banks of the Enterprise Trillane, recreate what's in there, and let me show you firsthand the glory of one of the bloodiest conflicts in human history. Not a liar, just misinformed. Use the memory banks of the Enterprise Trillane, recreate what's in there. War at its most realistic and terrifying. Okay, that was not the right audio file. All right, yeah, this looks a lot more like uh, the actual trenches of World War One. Rain has been falling for hours, ever since the battle ended. Otherwise, all is quiet on the Western Front. The sides of a trench, moats filled with soldiers in which they besieged each other for four bloody years. A German soldier, Though you couldn't tell it from the color of his uniform, mud has a way of making them all look the same. A dead French soldier. In his hands, he cradles a letter from his fiancée. A German soldier. He had lost his three brothers at Verdun, and had considered mutinying, but feared disgrace more than the loss of his own life. Rain has been falling for... Rain has been... Rain has been... Yes, it is not a pretty sight. And then mankind thought, well, we can do worse than this with the next war. The sides of a trench. Moats filled with soldiers in which they besieged each other for four bloody years. Kirk struggles to find the words to adequately describe this holocaust. Trelane. The Baron of Gothos seems delighted by what he is seeing. Delighted, right? Let's try to talk him out of that. Captain Kirk, I hope you had a good reason for dragging me out in the mud in the middle of the rain. Look around you, Trelane. Is this glory? Is this valor? Smell the stench of death. While knights fought in the sky, millions died in the mud. Diseased, starving, mutilated. Is this the sort of game you want to play, Trelane? For once in your life, Trelane, shut up and look around you. 
Again, tempting to say that, but probably not going to have the intended effect. Look around, Trelane. Take in the ambience, the romance of this place. Look at the proud soldiers celebrating the glories of war. Let's try not to reinforce his beliefs. Look around you, Trelane. Is this we'll glory? go with this one. Is this valor? Smell the stench of death. While knights fought in the sky, millions died in the mud. Diseased, starving, mutilated. Is this the sort of game you want to play, Trelane? But these people lost, Kirk. Shame and suffering is supposed to befall the losers in war. These were the winners, Trelane. Well, the French guy is. The other two were German, so that's debatable. You're inhuman, Trelane. You play games with people and ignore their suffering, just like the people who sent these men to die. You should have been a politician. And only to insult him. If you have any real courage, Trelane, if you want to experience real warfare, put yourself in their place. No powers, no titles. Experience the glory of war firsthand, like these men did. These were the w If you have any Let's real courage, that one. Trelane, if you want to... But aren't you and Furious supposed to die like that? Aren't you supposed to throw your lives away in feudal wars? Or die as meaningless non-entities? Dying a useless death without glory? No one is useless, Trelane. And no one wants to throw away their life in a futile war. We've changed, Trelane. We've grown up. It's time you did too. You're no fun anymore, Kirk. No fun at all. You're preachy just like them. Anything I'm interested in is always wrong. Release my ship. This is almost becoming a Picard speech. Are we sure we're in the right show? Trelane, look around you. Does this look right to you? Trelane, you don't go around hurting people and expect them to treat it as though they're having fun. The first thing a life form learns is to avoid pain. I don't know he has that level Release of empathy. My... Trelane, look around you. Does this look right to you? Let's go with that one. But I didn't cause this, Kirk. It was your own species' suicidal tendencies that did this. Trelane. If I admit that I cheated on our last encounter, can I have my ship back? Trelane, you're not experiencing the pain that people felt. You're supposed to sympathize with them. I'll tell you what, Trelane. You can keep the Enterprise. All I want is your triplane. Hmm. Well, we don't seem to be having the bright effect, so... Trelane. I'll tell you what, Trelane. You Maybe can we can distract him. All I want is your triplane. You want my plane? You can't have that, it's mine! But it's a lot nicer than the Enterprise. What would you rather have, a nice red triplane or a clunky looking starship? Which one is better, Trelane? Why, my triplane, of course! Then why don't you make lots of triplanes and let those dusty, dirty old starships go free? Just think of all the fun you can have putting them in bottles. Why, Captain, you've given me a hobby! I can hardly wait to stop! You'd better set those starships free, Trelane. You're going to need a lot of room on your mantelpiece for your new ships. Mm, that is true, Captain. I guess that's a better hobby than, uh... Captain's Log. The missing starships have been restored to normal size and are about to return to their assigned missions. It was horrible, Mr. Spock. Trelane recreated one of the greatest tragedies in human history. I've seen a lot, but even that... The waste of lives is appalling, even when one operates by pure logic. When one considers what those millions of lives that were lost might have done for humanity had the war never taken place. Well, now that we've taken care of business... Ow! I'll have to see Dr. McCoy about my shoulder. Something happened, Captain. Mr. Ellis and I. I see. Are your differences settled? I'm afraid not, Mr. Spock. We each won a game of zero-G squash, but I'm afraid he was called back to the Zimbabwe before we could have a rubber match. I think I dislocated my shoulder with a rather wild swing in the second game. Then logic suggests that your injury would have caused you to lose the match. I suppose so. He's a good player and a good officer. I'm putting in a request to bring him on the Enterprise. That should be fascinating. Hello, Captain. I'm Captain Gernsbeck of the Shinobi. I thought I would thank you personally before we left for Cephas Pie. A pleasure to meet you, Captain. Have we met before, Captain? There's something familiar. Perhaps we did, on some other planet, in some other star system sometime long ago. Message okay. from Starfleet Command. On screen. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I am very pleased with your performance. It was a perfect mission, Jim. 
Your reputation as Starfleet's best starship captain is secure. Kane out. And so ends another mission, and starts another one, Light and Darkness. Captain's Log. While exploring an uncharted star system in the Deneb Sector, we received what we think is a message from a distress beacon on Onias 2. We're en route to investigate. There's a few different ways of dealing with Trelane. You can try to convince him that war is bad and he should feel sympathy for the soldiers, but if you do, he'll just think you're preachy and send you away without really learning anything. Much more interestingly, you can also try to convince him that his parents are looking for him, which has a rather interesting outcome which I'll show in a separate bonus video. No matter which one you pick, it doesn't affect your score, however. And we got another perfect one. So that makes us 3 for 3 in the last 3 missions. Going well. I think this is uh, my personal favorite mission in the game. It makes good use of the existing character of um, Trelane, who when you think about it as sort of a proto-Q. I think there are some theories floating around that uh, he might have been of the Q, but personally I don't think so. It's not like Q ever needed power objects. Certainly the uh, concept was very similar. Especially in the episodes where Q is just toying around with our crew rather than trying to teach them a lesson. Although I always thought those were the less interesting Q episodes. Anyway, I'm getting off track. My point is I quite liked that episode. It's probably my favorite in the game. But now we have a uh, message to deal with from uh, Onias 2. I advise referring to the star map and setting a course for the Onius system, Captain. Or Onius, however you pronounce it. Can we look that up? Onius 2, a Class M planet in a system consisting of three unformed planets. Because of the high level of micrometeorite activity in the system, it is unusual for a Class M planet to exist. The planet is not inhabited and is not scheduled for colonization. That does sound interesting. It was in the Denep sector, but I don't think you can actually look that up. No. Alright, let's head over there. Um, I believe it's over here. Approaching Onius 2, Captain. It may be nothing, Captain, but a scan of the planet's atmosphere indicates a high concentration of rare gases trapped in the planet's magnetosphere. Atmospheric disturbances could produce random radio waves. It wouldn't be the first time, Mr. Spock, but we'll never be able to tell if we don't check it out. After all, to seek out new life and new civilizations is our mission to boldly go where no man has gone before. A split infinitive, Captain. What? The proper grammatical expression is to go boldly where no man has gone before. Somehow, I think it loses a little in the translation. That definitely sounds better, even with the split infinitive, which I've seen arguments both sides whether or not that's actually grammatically incorrect. And honestly, I don't care, so. Entering standard orbit. Fascinating, Captain. Sensors indicate only two faint life forms. It is difficult to distinguish, given the discharges in the planet's magnetosphere. It is, however, safe to transport to the planet's surface. Interesting. We'll see whether or not this signal means anything. Anybody responding to hills? No signal from the planet other than the distress beacon, sir. No. Well, I guess we should go to this distress beacon and see what we can do about it. Captain, our sensors will not be particularly useful to you while you're down there. And communications may be erratic, sir. We'll be fine, Lieutenant. What reason is there to worry? I'm afraid, Captain, there are plenty of precedents. We'll be here if you need us. I have no doubt of that. I have tracked the signal to its source. It is near the life forms. The rest of the planet is quite desolate. No sign of life or technology. The atmosphere is thin, but breathable. 
and I detect numerous micrometeorite hits. There are three unformed planets in this system. It's no wonder. There are so many micrometeorites. I'm surprised any Class M planet hasn't been pulverized by now. It is not inconceivable, but it is certainly unusual. Let's do it, Spock. You, McCoy, and I. Oh, and tell Bones to see if a genetic specialist is available. If there are only two life forms, we might be privileged to see life at its earliest stages. Feels to me as if we've landed on a skeleton after the vultures have picked it clean. A fascinating analogy, Doctor. Captain, the locus of the distress signal is in that building. I think the Doctor is right. Anything good here died a long time ago. It feels creepy to me. Thank you for that opinion, Mr. Johns. I'll be certain to use creepy in my log entry about this. Yeah, it's a very professional description. And it looks like we have another fourth landing party member. Again, not a security red shirt, but a genetic specialist in this case. Perhaps we'll have need of his talents, but we'll find out in the next video.